Welcome to Vital MTB's 2022 short travel test session. In recent years, the line between cross country and trail bikes has begun to blur as World Cup cross country racing has steadily moved towards more aggressive and technical courses, while everyday riders are looking for bikes that fly up climbs and provide a comfortable, stable, and fun experience on the way back down. While they aren't quite XC race bikes, they also aren't exactly trail bikes. So what are they? Eager to see what all the hype is about with these short travel, ride everything mountain bikes, we brought together four pedal hungry and downhill capable bikes to see how they perform across various terrain. Our goal was simple, find out where this exciting new category of mountain bike shines, what unique features set them apart, and ultimately help riders discover which bike would best complement their trails and preferences. In this video, we will discuss the performance of Alchemy's Arctos 120. To read the full review, head to vitalmtb.com. While the YT Izzo was the most forgiving and capable bike descending, the Alchemy Arctos 120 took the top spot as the fastest in the group, providing excellent stability and confidence that urged us to attack descents faster. Featuring 120 millimeters of rear wheel travel matched with 130 millimeter fork, the smallest Arctos in the family takes cues from its longer travel siblings and puts a premium on downhill performance. The frame is constructed from Alchemy's premium carbon and uses varying thicknesses of high quality weave to create an extremely strong and laterally stiff frame. A flip chip exists in the lower shock eyelet, offering two geometry configurations plus the possibility to run a mixed wheeled setup. We set on the slacker position, which provided a 65.75 degree head angle, the slackest in the test, and dropped the bottom bracket, creating a more descent focused geometry package. The hallmark of Alchemy's Arctos platform is their science suspension system that has a fluctuating shock rate, first beginning regressive, then shifting to progressive pass sag, then returning to regressive for the last 15% of travel. The Arctos 120 sizing does run a little big and was the only bike we rode in a size medium. However, with the 471 millimeter reach, the medium was on par with the other bikes, which fell between 470 and 478 millimeters. We tested the mid-range XT build that retails for $5,999. As the name suggests, components include a Shimano XT 12-speed drivetrain with XT brakes, along with a Fox Factory Float 34 fork and Factory DHX2 shock, an Industry 9 Enduro S Hydra wheels with Maxxis Minion DHF and a DHR2 tire combo. Alchemy did an impressive job specking all Arctos 120 models with components that complement the downhill abilities of the bike. What's more impressive is the value riders receive. Compared to the other bikes, the Arctos includes nicer components at a lower price. Even though the Izzo Core 3 is less expensive, we'd argue riders are getting a better bang for their buck with the Arctos. The closest priced bike was a Scott Spark 910, which for $300 more comes with Fox Performance Elite suspension and less impressive wheels. We know $6,000 is not cheap, but if you have the funds, you will be jumping on a handcrafted bike with premium components for much less than most brands can offer. The Arctos 120 XT build was also the only bike tested that we couldn't find modifications we'd make to better match the intended use of the bike. If we were to keep the Arctos as our own, we would, however, swap out the Selly Italia saddle for something more comfortable and trade in the Tag Metals handlebars for a bar with more rise. On the trail, the Arctos 120 was hands down the fastest descending bike thanks to its downhill focus build kit, impressively stiff frame, and super efficient suspension design. Despite being the heaviest at 30.4 pounds, we found the Arctos carried the most speed on rolling trails. The rear suspension was incredibly supportive, making it easy to pop over rocks or pump through corners. Getting on the pedals took a tad more energy, but power transfer was immediate and we never felt bogged down sprinting. So throughout the whole week riding these bikes, I kind of had a gut feeling that I was gonna be the fastest on the Arctos. And then when we did our time descent, uh, I did end up being the fastest on this bike. And I would chalk most of that up to how firm the rear suspension feels, but similar to the Scott, it's in a good way where you can really press your weight into the bike to pump and pump through turns and you know pump over trail features and rollers and maintain speed as well as generate speed. Diving into more demanding sections, the Arctos still reacted like a 120 millimeter travel bike. The rear suspension did not have a bottomless feel and the stiff frame provided a firm ride quality. For me, the Arctos was the fastest on the descents. It was uh, extremely stiff. Being a bigger guy, I need something uh, that's gonna be stiff and not disperse too much energy. As far as descending goes, I totally understand why a larger rider would like a frame like this because it's super, super stout. Um, with my lighter weight, I found myself pinging through sections and I was not quite as controlled. Um, 
and that was in comparison to all the other ones. Luckily, the Arctos build kit and geometry improved its ability to manage rough sections. Once we understood how the bike would react in such situations, we entered knowing we would have to be more deliberate with line choice and braking points to maintain speed. Two components really stood out that helped the Arctos rise above the rest on descents. First, Shimano's XT four piston brakes provided an extra level of bite and consistency compared to the two piston models found on the Spark and XE. Additional stopping control came from Maxxis's Minion DHF and DHR2 tire combo that sunk into the ground, finding more traction in loose soil than any other tires tested. While we weren't terribly surprised the Arctos smashed ascents, we were shocked to find out it flew up climbs. Despite its weight, slack geometry, and meaty tires, the Arctos was a competitive climber against the other test bikes. The seat angle was steep enough to keep us neutral over the pedals, while the wide and flat handlebars pulled our torso forward. In this position, we had no problem charging up climbs. The front rear suspension design again played a significant role, providing a stable pedaling platform that was highly efficient. So before we even hit the trails, I probably would have guessed that the Alchemy Arctos would have been the worst climbing, but even just on the first ride, I was really impressed with how efficient the bike is and how firm like the suspension platform is. There's even with the shock open, there's a minimal suspension movement. So I would say the Arctos is a perfect bike for probably somebody like myself who is wanting a bike that's going to not hold them back on descents. It's going to be a lot of fun on descents. Um, and somebody who, you know, might pick up this bike and lean more towards doing changes to it that's going to lean more towards descending performance. The suspension design crushes it on climbs. Um, and, you know, sometimes it might remind you of that on the descents, but I think it keeps it exciting. So for me, uh, the Alchemy surprised me on the climb. Um, it was the third, third out of the four. I think the only thing really slowing it down on the climb was the tires. Uh, if it had something a little more neutral and uh, a little faster rolling, uh, it could have definitely picked up the pace and done a little better. The seated position was neutral. Felt really comfortable. I didn't have to use the climb switch. It climbed great. The quick engagement on the hub was really nice in technical situations. Nothing stood out on the climb that I was really wanting to change. On the YT Izzo, I definitely found with that bike that I had to ride with the rear shock locked out to, you know, make it pedal kind of as good as the other bikes in the group, where with the Arctos, I didn't find it as necessary to be reaching down and locking out the shock all the time. I didn't notice the bike moving hardly at all with it open and it helped maximize traction, a little more comfort, made it easier for me to just spin circles without kind of chopping at the pedals. So what's the bottom line on Alchemy's Arctos 120? With an outstanding bang for your buck value, the Arctos is ideal for riders wanting a short travel weapon that will carry speed in every situation and won't shy away from blasting down descents. I believe this bike's for somebody who maybe want, who prioritizes like fun. <laughs> so like if you were gonna go rip out uh, multiple miles, but you're liking, you're not concerned about you know, setting any PRs on the climbs really, but it's gonna be super efficient and extremely confident on the descents. My average watts were 294 on the Arctos, whereas the YT I was 300 and then the um, Scott I was 284. So I mean, the Scott, I mean, I was putting in a little more effort on this bike, but I went, you know, over 10 seconds faster, which is pretty crazy actually. Yeah. But I kind of felt that. I thought this bike... 10 watts though? I mean, that's... I mean, it's pretty... I mean, it's something. I mean, I, I just think this is... Yeah, I think this is the ideal platform for a bigger guy that wants a lightweight trail bike that's really efficient. For a lighter person such as myself, I would push somebody more on the trail bike spectrum with this platform. Uh, maybe even just jump up to 135, 150 model, um, just because it is so stiff that you might as well just add the extra travel. It'll still be efficient. For more in-depth analysis of Alchemy's Arctos 120, please head to vitalmtb.com for the complete review. And to check out our complete short travel test session, click the link at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.